He's the potter, we're the clay. The clay doesn't have the right to say to the potter, why have you made me like this? So we're coming face to face with creator, creature, God, someone formed from the dust. From Walking in Grace, this is the Straight Truth Podcast, Christian truths in an increasingly secular world. Well, welcome again to another episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Philpott. We'd really like for you to join us in this conversation. So as you have questions or concerns, or maybe topics you'd like to propose, just leave that in the comments section or send us an email. Now remember, Straight Truth is a listener-supported podcast. So if you'd like more information about how you can help us produce this podcast week after week, just go to our website, straighttruth.net. Pastor, the claim of universalism is that God and His infinite love will save everyone, regardless of what they did uh, when they lived a life here on planet Earth, past and, and future. That God will save everyone in His creation. And, and uh, that is a doctrine that has uh, always kind of kept a footing in the history of the church. Never been the predominant doctrine, never been orthodoxy, but it has mm-hmm. uh, kept its footing there. It comes about, it rears its head every now and then, even, even more recently. There, there, are, there are several books that have been written uh, about this doctrine and maybe how the New Testament describes salvation according to this way. Well, our, our question is kind of along those lines. And the question is simply, why doesn't God just have mercy on everyone and save everyone, uh, whether they choose to believe in Him or not? What would the New Testament say? Yeah, the reason people ask such questions, the reason why that has always kept a foothold, as you, re- as you referred to, is is what God has actually done is at odds with our fallen humanity's sense of fairness. We just, it just doesn't make sense to us. Mm-hmm. We think it's not fair. And sometimes we wouldn't even deny that men deserve judgment. But what we think is, okay, so we all deserve judgment. Does God have the power the ability to save everyone if he wants. Mm. Yes. Yes, of course. So why wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. So, so this is sort of how it works out in our minds. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that the answer I'm going to give will satisfy such a person. In fact, it may anger them. Mm-hmm. But the answer is God hasn't saved everyone because he's chosen not to save everyone. God will be glorified not only through salvation, God will be glorified through judgment. God is a merciful God, but mercy is mercy. And to be mercy, it's not something that was owed. It's something that God is able to offer freely when and where and how He chooses. So in order to get these doctrines down in our minds and hearts, I think we have to begin at the place where we are fully convinced that what man deserves since the fall is God's wrath. As Ephesians 2 says, we are children of wrath Mm -hmm. by nature, deserving of the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. If God had damned the entire human race, He would have done nothing wrong. It would have been absolutely just. Mm -hmm. If every single one of us spent the rest of eternity in hell, God would have done nothing wrong. Am I fully convinced of that? That, that? That God is right to judge sin and sinners, that that's justice. If I can get that in my mind and heart, and then I ask, why does God save anybody? If we all deserve, He is is the Holy One. We are the sinners. He is the King. We are the offenders. If we deserve wrath, why did He save anyone? Mm -hmm. Now the answer is mercy, grace, kindness, love. Who deserves that? Nobody deserves it. So anybody to whom God extends that mercy gives him praise. No one else has a complaint. No one else has a complaint. Mm -hmm. You've gotten what you deserve. Furthermore, I would say man left in his sinful state gets what he wants. I mean, we we in our sinful state, um, from a moral point of view, we desire sin. We desire that which dishonors God. We are sinners by nature and by choice. So when man runs from God by nature, and he does, and then God judges him at the end by, uh, you know, leaving him unreconciled to God for the rest of eternity, he's gotten what he wanted. 
though it is horrific what he arrives at, and he was blinded to the, to the horrific nature of where he was headed. So we, we're, we're in Romans 9, right? I mean, we're, the, the very question is asked, when you explain how God saves sinners, that it's a matter of sovereignty and free grace and mercy, this is the objection that's always raised. In fact, it gives me comfort to know we're actually preaching the biblical doctrines because when you say what God says, you're going to get the same objections Paul got when he wrote it. In Romans 9, verse 14, it says, What shall we say then? This is in, in, in reference to Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. God made a choice, chose Jacob. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? Is this fair? Is this just? By no means. This is no injustice. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I've raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that, that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. God is glorified, not just in salvation. God is glorified in judgment. And God's everlasting decrees that are perfectly wise and perfectly good that we can't get our minds around, that we don't have full access to all that went into God's decisions. I know this, God has not acted arbitrarily. God has acted with perfect wisdom. But His actions are not explained by us, something He saw in us or foresaw in us. The answers for why God has done what He has done are found in God, and God is perfect. So I can trust whatever went into what He's doing, it was mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. But I have to say at the same time that what He has chosen to do is to save some mm -hmm. and not others. And this causes us uh, sometimes a real sense of darkness or dread, which I think is actually healthy. Because now we are not putting God on our level. Now we're coming face to face with the reality that God is God. Mm -hmm. And we are not. We are creatures. So could God have saved everyone had He chosen to do so? Yes. Did He choose to do so? No. Is He somehow unfair or unjust by making that choice? No. He's perfectly just. What, he, what we all deserve was hell. What He's given to some is mercy. Hmm. And it was His choice as to whom and when and how He would do that. And that's His prerogative because He is God. He's the potter, we're the clay. The clay doesn't have the right to say to the potter, why have you made me like this? So we're coming face to face with creator, creature, God, someone formed from the dust. And when we have that perspective now, that's humility. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming face to face with where we ought to be, humble. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how, how do you respond to the, to the accusation then that this is a cruel God then, one that would actually shape from the clay a vessel of dishonor and mm -hmm. then another a vessel of honor? What would you say to that? Yeah, I would say he was working with one lump of fallen clay in, in Romans 9. Mm -hmm. It's not like you had, you had uh, neutral clay, and so he's going to form some uh, for salvation. And from that neutral clay, he's going to form some for damnation. No, in Romans 9, the fall has already occurred. Mm -hmm. So what you have before God is a, a lump of clay that is completely ruined, fallen. And yet he chooses in marvelous mercy to form from that fallen humanity some through mercy and salvation that will be honorable vessels, and others he forms in keeping with what they are. That is, he leaves them to themselves. So when we think about it from the standpoint of the preaching of the gospel, the gospel is preached to all men. Mm -hmm. All men are offered sincerely mm -hmm. uh, the, the opportunity to run to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And so if you want to come to Christ, permission is granted. Mm -hmm. If you want to come, more than just if you want to, we beg you to come to Christ. If you refuse that, it is explained by you. You don't want him. What God does in the case of the elect whom he saves is he actually changes our want to. He works in our hearts in a way so that we desire what we did not desire before. Using the comparison of blindness, physical blindness, we were blind, he opens our eyes, shines his light into our hearts, uh, grants us the, the moral ability, the desire for Jesus, and in that way he saves us. So what I would say is, it's not as though God is damning people who want to be saved. 
That is not the picture of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. they, they, there you are wanting Jesus and mm -hmm. God says, no. Mm -hmm. No, rather it's people who don't want Jesus that will be damned. And when God extends mercy, he takes people who didn't want Jesus and he takes hold of them mm. and changes them. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, if you've made an observation or have a question related to this episode, just leave that in the comments section below. Now, be sure to go to our website, straighttruth.net. There you will find a host of information, including links to all of our social media channels like Facebook and Twitter. And if you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to like it and share it with family and friends. Lastly, go to the podcast section of iTunes and leave us a review. Now remember, Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.